Hello everybody. We're looking today at force vectors. Go and put that table of contents, put in the title of the next page of notes, box it in, put the day's date next to it, and we'll begin. So vector. We're talking about vectors are vector quantities, right? That means they have magnitude and direction. So example will be position, force, or moment. Vector notation. This vector is given a variable such as a or b. Handwritten no notation only includes an arrow such as vector a or vector b, denoted by the arrow above the a and b. We illustrate vectors are represented by arrows, they include magnitude, direction, and sense. So, say so the magnitude obviously is the force or the strength of it. Here is represented by the length of the line. We talked about that last time. How the longer the line means a greater magnitude. So this, whatever it is, however many units, they say three line segments, so the magnitude is three. The direction is a, the angle between the reference axis and the arrow's line of action. So here, if they're showing us this as being our reference line, say so call it the horizon, um, then we're 30 degrees above the horizon. So they say 30 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. And then the sense is kind of just given the overall direction of it. So we have a direction of the tip of the arrow, so obviously this one's going up and to the right. So that's the sensor they're showing here, upward and to the right. So, you've probably seen this before, but just as a refresher, um, here you have our four quadrants. So anything on the right side is going to be positive x to the right, positive y up. On the left side, and over here, you see the x now is going negative to the left, and then y is still going up, so therefore still positive. Anything on the le bottom left over here, x is negative, you go to the left, and this time y is going down, so it's negative. Over here in the far bottom right, y is once again is going down, so it's negative. And then this time x is going to the right, so it is positive again. Okay? So those are things we're looking at. The important thing to remember here is for y, up is positive, down is negative. For x, right is positive, and left is negative. That's the important thing to get out of this. So, Trigonometry, I haven't had this yet, we'll go over that right now. But just a brief overview of it for a right triangle, triangle with 90 degree angle. So we see that denoted down here by the symbol in the, the, in the corner, it's a right triangle. Sum of all interior angles has to equal 180 degrees. And the Pythagorean theorem states that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So it's talking about the sides basically. So it's saying if you know one side here, the length here squared plus the length here squared would equal the hypotenuse squared, basically. Um, and then trig functions, uh, Sakatoa. Hopefully you've heard of those before. We're looking at those today and for most of this lesson. So sine theta, sine the angle, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Then you have cosine theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then you have tangent theta, which is opposite over adjacent. So for example, looking here, looking at sine theta, opposite of our hypotenuse, if this is our theta, our angle that we're either looking for or being given, the side opposite would be over here, okay? And then the hypotenuse would actually would be the, obviously be the hypotenuse. For cosine theta, then once again, this is our angle, it's adjacent over our hypotenuse, so the side adjacent to it or touching it is right here. So you think of this as the x direction, that's the adjacent side, and then that would be over the hypotenuse once again. And then tangent theta is just opposite over adjacent. So once again, this is our angle here. This is our theta. So it would be opposite the y here, opposite over adjacent, which would be our x here. Okay? So you have to divide those two numbers and then use the sine, cosine, or tan function on your calculator. And once again, I must remind you, please make sure your calculator is in degree mode, not in radians mode, or you will get the wrong answer. So... Why do we use trig? Well, because, talked about this earlier, our vector can be broken down into two pieces. It can be broken down into its x um, uh, component and then its y component. This one's going up and to the right, so we see the x going here to the right and the y component going up. So the hypotenuse is the magnitude of the force, f. So in the figure here, so the adjacent side is the x component. So we see that here. Here's the x component of the vector f. And then the opposite side, because here's theta, so the opposite side over here, that would be your y component, Fy. 
So sine theta, right? Sine theta is opposite over, opposite over hypotenuse. So that means you would have Fy divided by F. Cosine theta, adjacent over hypotenuse. So your adjacent side would be Fx over F. And then tan theta would be Fy over Fx. So opposite over adjacent. So you have Fy over Fx. And that's once again if you're finding this angle here. We could also find this angle here if we wanted to. Um, so then, of course, if we did that, though, that would change our adjacent and opposite side. Because now if this is the theta we're trying to find this angle, that means, therefore, now this would be the adjacent side, and this side over here would be our opposite side. So it's very, very important that you keep straight which uh, angle you're looking for or finding or using, and then that will to tell you which is your side opposite and your adjacent side. So if you take these equations here, say sine theta is Fy over F, and then you were to rearrange those to solve for just Fy, if we try to solve for the Y component, then you would get F times sine theta, so the actual vector times sine theta. Uh, same thing for F of X, try to solve for F of X, then you would do F times cosine theta. And then it says down here at the bottom, Fx and Fy are negative if left or down, respectively. So remember, remember uh, Ys, up is always positive, down is negative, X, right is positive, and going to the left is negative. So vector A, magnitude is 85 pounds, the direction is 35 degrees counterclockwise from positive x-axis. So we see that down here, it's going above the x-axis, and the sense is just right and up. So there's 75 pounds, 35 degrees above the x-axis, and then we're going to break it down into its two components. And this is going up to the right, we're going to break it into its x and its y component. So there's the x and there's the y. Since 35 degrees is our angle or our theta, Fy is going to be our uh, opposite side, and Fx is going to be our, our adjacent side. So to solve for Fax, right, we're going to use cosine theta adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is the side adjacent of Fax. So cosine theta is Fax over A, because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So therefore, it's going to be, 30, it's going to be cosine 35 degrees is Fax, which is our unknown, divided by 75 pounds. Go ahead and rearrange that to solve for Fax. So you multiply 75 pounds times cosine 35 degrees. And then 61.4 pounds is the answer here. They put right in the answer just to remind us it is positive. Since this is going to the right, uh, it's in the x and going to the right. So therefore, it's a positive answer. Okay. Uh, to solve for Fay, now the y component, we're going to use sine theta. So that's just opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be sine theta is Fay over vector a. So therefore, it's sine 35 degrees is Fay over 75 pounds. So if we rearrange that to solve for Fay, you get 75 pounds, I'm um, sorry, Fay is equal to 75 pounds times sine 35 degrees. And then up again, just to remind us that it is going to be a positive answer. So you go ahead and figure that out, and then you get Fay is 43 pounds. And once again, it's positive because it is going up, which is positive in the y direction. Now, vector b here, same force, magnitude 75 pounds, still 35 degrees, but this time it's going clockwise from the positive x-axis. So it's actually below the x-axis. And the sense is right and down. So right now, what it's telling us is right, remember in the direction, is positive from the x-direction, but down is negative in the y-direction. Okay? So we're going to have one positive answer and then one negative answer as we solve for the x and y components of this vector. So, so for FBX, well, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So that'd be FBX right there over hypotenuse. So you have cosine theta is FBX over B. So therefore, it's cosine 35 degrees is equal to FBX over 75 pounds. Rearrange for FBX, and you get 75 pounds cosine 35 degrees, and they're saying to the right, just to remind us that it's going to be a positive answer of 61.4 pounds. And always remember, if I'm ever going too fast for you, you can always pause the video. And at the end, also, if you need to review it, you can rewatch the video, or even you can still look at the complete PowerPoint on the LMS. Okay, so solve for FBY. We have sine theta. So we're looking at the opposite, so FBY over hypotenuse. So sine theta is negative FBY over B. So we get sine 35 degrees is FBY over 75 pounds. They're putting the negative there just to remind us that it is going down, so it's going to be a negative answer. 
So FBY is 75 pounds sine 35 degrees down. Once again, it's going to be negative. So we got an answer of FBY is 43 pounds, or no, sorry, negative 43 pounds. This is a negative answer. So what does this mean for us? Well, here they give an example. So the resultant force, two people are pulling a boat to shore. They're pulling with the same magnitude. So you see person, say person A, pulling here on the first row, 35 degrees above the x-axis. Then you see person B, or vector B, pulling here at 35 degrees below the x-axis. So basically it's the two vectors that we just looked at. One was in the uh, counterclockwise direction above the x-axis, and one is clockwise uh, below the x-axis. Okay. Now before we move on here, though, I want to ask you a quick question. Think about this: Is how could these two people? Think about it. If you break it down into their x and y components, they're going up and to the right. But if they really wanted to combine their forces, right, and pull the boat out of the water onto the shore, what's one way they could actually solve this? What's an easy way of doing that? What could they do with their angles in between them? Basically, think about it that way. Okay. Because if you think about it, really, they're fighting each other by pulling up and to the right or down to the right when they're really they're trying to go out of the water to the right completely. So it says list the forces according to sense. So label right and up forces is positive and label left and down forces is negative. So we already have all the components that we've already solved for. We know FAX, which is the X component of A. We know FBX, which is the B component or X component, I'm sorry, of B. Which they're both 61.4 pounds. They're both positive, so both go on the right. In the y direction, we know the y component of A is 43 pounds, positive, it's going up. The b component, or y component of B, is going to be negative 43 pounds because it is going down. So these are all numbers we just found just a second ago. So they're going to redraw these for us. So we have all of our pieces labeled. So there's FAY, FAX, FBX, and then FBY. So we're going to sum the forces together. So in the x direction, you're going to add FAX plus FBX. So you get 61.4 pounds plus 61.4 pounds. So your sum is 122.8 pounds to the right. In the y direction, FAY plus FBY is going to be 43 pounds plus a negative 43 pounds, which is zero. So obviously these two cancel. So there is no real force in the y direction. It's only in the x direction. So the magnitude is 122.8 pounds. The direction is zero degrees from the positive x-axis because we have no y component now. It's all gone. And the sense is to the right. So, so this draw the resultant force. So 122.8 pounds, 0 degrees from the positive x-axis and the sense is to the right. So basically our resultant force is this, 122.8 pounds to the right. And there's our resultant force or resultant vector. Okay, so another example or problem to look at, kind of the same thing. Here we have a hook, two ropes pull on it. Let's call it vector C, 300 pounds, 60 degrees above the x-axis. And this time we have D below the x-axis at 30 degrees with 400 pounds. So this is to determine the sense, magnitude, and direction for the resultant force. So find the x and y components of vector C. So here's vector C, so we need to find the x and the y components. So we're going to redraw that. So we have 60 degrees that we know. That means our FCX is going to be our adjacent side, right? And then our FCY is going to be our opposite side of the 60 degrees. So FCX is going to be 300 pounds times cosine 60 degrees to the right. So it's positive. So we get 150 pounds. FCY is going to be 300 pounds sine 60, right? Because FCY is opposite over hypotenuse. So 300 pounds times sine 60 degrees. It's up, so it'll be positive also and it comes out to 259.8 pounds. So there's your FCX and your FCY. And the exact same thing for D. This time we're going to take D. It's going down to the right. So we go to the right for FDX. FDY is going down. 300 degrees is our below our x-axis. right? That means FDX is going to be our adjacent and FDY is going to be our side opposite the 30 degrees. So FDX, 400 pounds, cosine 30 degrees to the right. So our adjacent side over hypotenuse. So we get 346.4 pounds, and it is positive. For FDY, we're going to do 400 pounds sine 30, sine 30 degrees down, because FDY is the side opposite, right here. Side opposite, 30 degrees, so that's FDY. 
and then that comes out to a negative 200 pounds because it is going down. So those are FDX and our FDY. Now the last step we have to do is add them up. So we're going to go and list the forces according to sense. Label the right and up force as positive and label the left and down forces as negative. So in the x direction from these two combined we have FCX 150, FDX of 346.4. In the y direction we have FCY of 259.8 pounds positive and then the FDY we have a negative 200 pounds. So we redraw the vector components in the x and y direction. So there we have our four components in the x and y. And then we go ahead and add all those, all those together. So the sum of the x directions is FCX plus FDX. So you're going to do 150 plus 346.4 pounds. So you get 496.4 pounds to the right. For FCY, it's going to be FCY plus FDY. So 259.8 pounds plus a negative 200 pounds, and you get 59.8 pounds. It is up because the answer is still positive, so therefore the y direction is going to be up. So the overall sense for our resultant vector, or force, is going to be right and up. So we need to draw these x and y components, the resultant force. So two equivalent ways to draw the x and y components. You can do it this way, draw either to the right first, and then draw up, or and there's your resultant vector, or the other way of drawing it is go up first and then to the right. But once again, doesn't matter because our resultant vector is the same thing. It's going up and to the right. So we're trying to solve for the blue arrow. Basically, that's our resultant vector. So label our pieces. So we have 59.8 pounds in the y and then 496.4 pounds in the x directions. FR is going to be our resultant force. So we solve for the magnitude. Well. If we go back to Pythagorean Theorem, we say that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So you say that 59.8 pounds squared plus 496.4 pounds squared equals the uh, resultant force squared, or c squared. Square those, add them up, take the square root to find fr, and you get 500 pounds. So the resultant vector fr here is going to be 500 pounds. And the only thing left to, would be to find the actual direction of it. So we know we can label that. We're trying to find theta here. So we're going to use tangent, stop opposite over hypotenuse, or I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent. Um, so you're going to look at side opposite, which is 59.8 over adjacent. So that's going to be 59.8 pounds divided by 496.4 pounds. Pounds cancel when you divide. Then you have to do inverse tan. Do that on the calculator once again, make sure you're in degree mode. And the inverse tan of 59.8 divided by 496.4 and you would get 7 degrees. So it's only 7 degrees uh, counterclockwise or above the x-axis. So the direction is 7 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So the resultant force is magnitude 500 pounds, 7 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, and the sense is right and up. And there you go. That's the uh, overview of vectors. Uh, again, something that goes along with this. So. Um, Go ahead and go ahead and start working on that now. Uh, you can cross your notes out. It's on the line, sign on the line. It's on the bottom of the page and date it. Have witness sign date also. And if you have any questions, email me, and I'll see you when I get back. Thank you very much.